What are we calling this? Southwick Stories. <laughs> Southwick Stories. Folks, how are you today? My name is Joe Didi. I'm here with Jim Putnam and Joyce Spanish. Mm -hmm. Joyce, how old are we today? How old? How old? <laughs> I'm You're not supposed <laughs> to ask a lady how old she is, I'm Joe. 58. I'm 83. <laughs> Welcome. So Thank we would love to discuss with you your times growing up here in Southwick. Mm -hmm. And Jim Putnam has all the questions. Yeah. So we'll start with Jim. Ah, okay. So uh, you did grow up in Southwick. Oh, yes. Uh, on North Long Yard. On, on North Long Yard. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, were your, was your family farmers or uh, what? what my, my father was um, basically a tobacco farmer. Okay. But... Um, he worked for, during the war, he worked for American Bosch, and um, he, he used to, uh, you know, say that he had all these women to supervise, but of course that's who the only ones who could work. Right. Workers at that time. And um, my dad um, bought a lot of land in Southwick. He usually got it from taxes that had not been paid, and so he was. He would purchase it and um, built the house on North Longyard Road. My grandparents lived down the road a little ways. And um, he built the house there and we moved in, I think, in 43. Okay. And um, it was wonderful. So after the war, did he go back to tobacco farming? Yes, or? he did. Okay. Both of my parents, my mom only went to the eighth grade. And my dad, I know, went to trade school. But um, after, they both worked on tobacco because that was the thing. That <laughs> Absolutely. That, that was the only thing in Southwick and West Southfield. They worked with Hathaway and Steam Corporation, which was later bought by the American Tobacco Company. And um, so dad was asked to be a foreman after the war. Dad was asked to be a foreman on um, the South Southwick um, uh, farms, and um, so that's where he was for many, many years. <laughs> so did you work tobacco? Oh, of course. Of course. <laughs> so, so what did you, I, 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 I'd like to hear you tell us what you did uh, on, on the tobacco farm, the different jobs that you did. Uh, we took in, I think the first one was, um, the f beginning of the season was taking in, st uh, stringing the tobacco under the tent there. And then, usually after that, they started picking, because uh, uh, tobacco grows pretty fast. And um, so we would um, do that, and it would be in the barn, and I loved to putting, I had hand sewers. One of my aunts was one of the hand sewers, and Mrs. Butler. They were fantastic. They could they could sew so fast you would not <laughs> believe it. And um, so I did a lot of the piling on the bench because they had to have two leaves, you know, together. And they would. And so then after that, we would sometimes, um, of course, the tobacco would be hung, and then later in the summer, um, if it was already cured. We would have some time to take it down, and but then it was time to go back to school. So, what was it like working in under the tents? Say when you were tying the tobacco up uh, in June. What uh, describe what you recall about that kind of work? Um, it was dirty. <laughs> <laughs> it was dirty, and you you had to do a lot of bending because you had to go down, and um, you were tired <coughs> at the end of the day. And on warm days, it got very hot in the tent. And, uh, but we were always treated very well, and there was always water. And How long did it take for the sap to wear off of your hands after you had done that? Because <laughs> you couldn't wash that off, right? Well, I never really, really had a problem with it. It seemed like, you know, you're a kid. <laughs> right. Doesn't matter. Yeah, doesn't matter. <laughs> and do you have any memory of how much you got paid for yes. uh, tying up tobacco? Yes. 60 cents an hour. 
I think I graduated up to 65 or 70 cents an hour by the time I finished when I was 18. <laughs> Now, was there any pace rate with that, or just straight, straight no, hours? No, that was that was straight hours. Yeah, the piece work came um, with the boys to picking the tobacco. And they would have some piece work there, but um, us girls didn't. So it was good. Well, I'm I'm glad to hear you say that because I, I think so many people think that it must have been awful, but uh, uh, most most kids growing up, unless you were somebody like me who lived on another kind of farm, did tobacco for at least a few years, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. And probably paid for your clothes to go back to school? Oh, yes. Every Friday night into Westfield, downtown Westfield, and get your school clothes for the year, and you had the money. and. I bought my first camera there that um, I had been looking at, and we um, we just had a wonderful time. And mother and I would go into into Landau's and have a Sunday, and Landau's. it was a great evening. Very good. So let's switch gears. Uh, you went to the Consolidated School. Yep. Eight years. Yes. Okay. Graduated in 1954, and you know. I was, my husband and I were talking about that, and I think that I may be the only one left living in Southwick. There are others, of course, that are still alive and everything else, but I think that I'm the only one that's left living in Southwick. I went, because after we left here, of course, we went to um, Westfield High School, and um, and I went all through my yearbook and everything else, and I couldn't think of anyone in my class that was still living here. Wow. So I, I was going to check the um, at the at the museum there, and they have the, the pictures of the classes of different years. Okay. I was going to check yeah, that out. Yeah, that'd be good to, <laughs> good good to check just to yeah. be sure, huh? <laughs> Well, we're glad you're still with us. Yeah, well, thank yeah. you. <laughs> I tend to be here a long time, good, you know. Good, good. I already told um, Cindy, 17 years, she's going to have to plan my party. Okay. For, for that's, 100, so. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's not that long <laughs> off, is yeah. it? Uh, so oh. she better get planning. Well, my dad always wanted to live to be 100. He, he just loved life. And um, so I said, well, I'll take over that for you. <laughs> How far did he get? 81. How far did mom get? 85. Yeah, see, that's a better indicator. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, is how far mom got. Uh, yeah. Gotcha. So, so 85, well, I think 100 yeah. doable. Especially yeah. if you keep doing the gardening. Yes. Because, <laughs> you know, we've learned that that's therapeutic, isn't it? Gardening is wonderful for the, for the soul, for the mind, for the body, everything. See, we're going to have health advice here, too, Joe. I see that. Uh, <laughs> what do you say? <laughs> and in between, you take yoga and aerobics and anything else at the senior center. Sure. Here. Little plug for the senior I see center. Cindy yeah. will appreciate that. Yep. Uh, so it's all good. So uh, do you remember two or three teachers who were favorite teachers? Oh, yes. Uh, I remember all of my teachers. Mrs. Hill was my first teacher okay. in, um, in first grade, Mrs. Maloney in second grade. Miss Bedrosian. Miss Bedrosian was my third grade teacher and she was also my mom's teacher and my son's teacher. Wow. Three generations. Three generations. And then we had Mrs. Moog in fourth grade and fifth grade was Mrs. Christensen, who passed away not too many years ago, a few years ago. Mrs. Hatton. And six, and Mrs. Benway in seven, and Mrs. Kellogg in eight. Okay, so uh, let's start with Mrs. Kellogg because she she was uh, her family and yes. her uh, were certainly um, um, you know legendary figures in Southwick. Yes, she was. So so what was she like as your eighth grade teacher? What what memories do you have of, of that? She was wonderful. She did you know encouraged us um, in different ways and. Um, you know, she helped us write um, what you would call the, um, what we were going to be or who was, okay. 
you know, who was the funniest in the class and different things like that. I was very hard of hearing, so she made sure that I was in the front of the class so that I could hear. And she was a wonderful lady. Okay. And, and uh, another legendary teacher, Mrs. Benway. So what was Mrs. Benway like? Mrs. Benway. Oh, she was lovely. <laughs> 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 I really liked her. I really liked her. She was, um, when I think of Mrs. Benway, I think of history. Hmm. History and, and all that. Oh, and I forgot, you know, the, I think when I was in seventh and eighth grade, we had our first male teachers, and they were, um, I think they were specialized like in science, and okay. Mr. Crean, and um, Mr. Desmond came, I think he came after we had left, and... Um, so I can't ask any questions about Mr. Desmond? No. No, okay. Because <laughs> he, was, he was a character, too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but, no. Uh, yeah, he came. He, he came just after. Yeah, after the, we graduated. I think he came a year or two later. He had to be young, because I think yeah, I that had been when he started. in 84. Yeah. Yeah, they were all out of, actually, the, they were the first teachers out of a college. Right. They right. were all very young, and, of course, they were all very handsome. <laughs> and us girls, you know, we just love them. <laughs> oh. uh, and I'll just ask you one other because, uh, again, uh, I think it's neat that uh, she went three generations with your family. But Miss uh, Bedrosian, what do you remember uh, about her? Miss Bedrosian, she was she was absolutely wonderful. She was the greatest teacher. <laughs> it's funny though that my sister had her too, of course. And my sister never told me until last summer that Miss Bedrosian would say, How come you don't not like more like your sister? Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> She never told me that before. <laughs> I would have said something to Miss Bedrosian because my sister was in first grade and I was in eighth grade. Oh. But Miss Bedrosian, um, she was so talented. She loved, you know, loved the teacher's art. And, um, she loved kids, didn't she? Yes. Uh, you know, she just. Oh, uh, she really, really did. And if someone was bad in the class, she couldn't understand, you know. She had a hard time accepting that yeah. because um, she was just a wonderful lady. Yeah. Any other good memories about Consolidated School? Uh, oh I yes, mean, Miss, Mrs. Holly's oh. macaroni and cheese. Okay, tell us about that. <laughs> Mrs. Mrs. Holly was the best cook, and we had the best meals I think mm. of anywhere around, and. Um, Mrs. Holly made a macaroni and cheese, and she made it with white cheddar. Well, my mom would make it at home, and she would put a can of tomato soup in it. And I would say, no, no, no. <laughs> 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 oh, we, had, we had wonderful meals. They were all home cooked, and, but my husband tells me that it was the same way. At, he went to school at Holy Trinity, and uh, they had all home cooked. So it was nice. really good. Well, that's good that you've got good school lunch memories. Oh, uh, because uh, ate everything. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> there was no waste. Do you remember who your school bus driver was? Yes, um, Mr. Davis. Okay. Uh, and then Mr. R also. Uh, and so they probably in those days probably their route was like a third of town, huh? Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, they drove yeah. all over the place. Yeah, they did. They did, and uh, and it just seemed that we very seldom had days off from school. You know, right. We didn't have the liabilities and all that that you do today, but we um, we had a good time. So, uh, what was it like to go off to Westfield High School? Because uh, in those days, Southwick uh, didn't have a high school yet. But uh, was that it, a big, big deal for uh, you, or? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it was exciting. It was really exciting. Um, we, uh, of course, we were kind of, you know, the 
country bumpkins, and all these Westfield kids were there, and and they all knew each other because they yeah. all went to you know to yeah. school together and everything else. But um, they were great, you know. In our homerooms, we were all mixed in. Of course, we had our kids from Granville and Huntington and all of the hill towns. So a lot of the kids. I was already um, friends with from 4-H. Oh, okay. From Granville and Huntington, and, and a lot of them from um, Westfield, over in the um, near Montgomery and all Wyoming that. Area. So I knew we actually knew a lot of the kids yeah. that went yeah, there. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's good. So, so what? <coughs> what was your 4-H project? As long uh, as you brought that up. Well, I took and I. Um, started off as a youngster, probably about six, seven, eight years old, I think it was. My mother um, had a cooking for age. Okay. Mrs. Wolf down the street had sewing. And then I had gardening Mr. Porter Stevens. Yeah. Who was, he, um, we had him for a gardening for uh, age leader. Um, and then I got a calf, a Guernsey calf, and I did showmanship and everything else at the fairs. Did you? So you you did the fair circuit with your oh, Guernsey yeah. calf? Yeah. Oh uh, yeah. Very good. <laughs> did did okay. you? Uh, I'll come back to the fair circuit, but uh, uh, did you uh, raise your calf up to uh, be a heifer and a milking cow? Oh yeah. Or, yeah. So yeah, but did, I didn't have to milk it. Okay. <laughs> My brother did. Oh, okay. So he but had, you know, I was in the house. He had to go milk the cow. Well, that's, a, that's a pretty good deal if you're, yeah. you know, uh, going to be in the, the dairy cow yeah. business. Okay. Uh, so, uh, what fairs did you go to? Did you go to the Southwick Fair? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yes. I always went to the Southwick Fair. I didn't have my, I was doing um, canning and, yeah. uh, and, you know, baking and all that stuff at that time. And, um, but then one of the very first <coughs> fairs that I drove, I was 16 years old, I had gotten my license. I drove all the way to Sturbridge because that's wow. where the 4-H fair was. I was so proud of myself. I guess. I, I, <laughs> I drove all the way through Springfield. Of course, it wasn't. No uh, turnpike. No, no. No turnpike. So it was wonderful. And that was where the 4-H fair was. And it was Did really you take your calf there? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So you 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 drove a truck? No, I didn't. No, no, no. My father always did the hauling. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. Dad so just, wouldn't let us haul. Okay. No, that's <laughs> too much for his girl. <laughs> <laughs> so, and what are your memories of the Southwick Fair? That seems to be kind of a forgotten chapter in Southwick history, but. Um, tell fun. us a little bit about that and, and maybe how, as a kid, you thought of, did you look forward to it? Was it a big deal for yes. uh, country kids? Yeah, my mother, um, I didn't enter too many things at that time. It, it was be before I really, it didn't seem as though I was that old when it was happening. Where uh, was it? It was in the cafeteria down here in the... And out behind in the grounds here. Yeah. Oh, wow. And it was, yeah. was it a one-day fair? That I don't remember. Okay. I, I, I See, I, I remember the very end of it. And, uh, and at that point, I think it was a one-day deal. But I, I don't, you know, uh, could have yeah. been a two-day before that. Yeah, they had, um, you know, um, food preservation and baking and all of that. And it was all done in the cafeteria. A lot of... Um, Needlework, crochet, and embroidery, and, and all of that. It was good. So and to win a prize for your? Um, yes, I recall. Projects? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, um, did they have? Did they have like rides? Did they have a Ferris wheel? I don't or remember no? that. No. Okay. No. Okay. I thought that all came later okay. when the firemen started getting together and. Um, so when did Fireman's Carnival start? When did that become? You know, I don't okay. remember that. Okay. I, don't, I don't remember when it started. We always went to it. We always took our children and everything else. But I don't remember when it started. You were younger, though? Did you have children when it started, you think? Or were you still single? When I what? The, when, when you thought the firemen's 
Oh took yeah, over. no, no, that was. You had kids. That by was then? when I had children. Yeah, yeah, and um, we would go there. So when I, uh, I I love going down Feeding Hills Road this time of the year because you have the best tended garden <laughs> uh, that I can see from the road anyway in yeah. the town of Southwick. You and you and your husband do a, a wonderful job well, of taking care you. of that. And I often see you, especially in the morning, I'll see you out there uh, uh, tending away. Uh, well, you know, it takes long now that getting older, it takes me longer to do things. I used to be able to get out there and just whip through it, but. <laughs> Can you resist the urge to no. uh, uh, add a new plant or try something different uh, this year than you did last year? Oh, of course. <laughs> you try not to resist it, but it doesn't happen. Yeah, yeah. yeah you know, there's, there's something you're gonna lose during the winter, so you gotta put new ones in anyway, yeah. so it works out. So along that line of, of discussion, uh, do you remember, and I may have the name wrong, but Brookside, uh, 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 oh yes. Uh, it was, it was a, like a picnic grove or something. Uh, what, was, what was the right name of it? That was Mrs. M that was Mrs. McMullins. That was right next door to me. And those, Down the hill, right? Uh, towards the brook. Yeah. And that was the most pristine property you could imagine. All us kids used to go there all the time. Mrs. McMullen had a stand where she um, sold snacks and stuff. And the brook, the brook was amazing. And it was the place you wanted to be on a hot day in the summer. And uh, I, being the oldest, sibling would take the rest of my siblings down there and we would play in the brook and it, it was just the most beautiful sand and it was just great. Was there an admission charge to go in there no. or you just if you bought a, a no, soda or something? We did all the brooks. We did the big swimming hole over a little bit further down and um, it was great. Okay. And Brookside across the cafe. Yes. That was that was started during the war. That was maybe even before the war. I'm not sure, but I remember going there with my mother and father and and having um, supper there. It's good Italian food, and the Zamparinis were the owners at that time, and and um, they were just lovely people. Did the so flood go through there? Does the, what? the flood you speak of earlier, did that it must have? Yeah, it must have gone. Through. It came because it came right through there. Yeah, I, mean, I remember we had worked on tobacco that day, taking down tobacco, and it started raining and harder and harder and harder. And father said, you know, tobacco was getting too wet, and so we couldn't, we shouldn't take any more down. So we went home, no problem. The next morning, we got up, we got to the top of the hill where my house is. It was all water, <laughs> totally water. And um, my father eventually got a, a boat. And there was no house there. We lived on North Longyear. Right. That was all woods and everything else. And um, my father got a boat and he was motoring around there. And, but yeah, that was all flooded. That went right straight through. Other other than seeing that, that was that's your memory of the 1955 flood. Uh, yeah. So it didn't impact you up on North Long Yard particularly. Yeah. The only other place I saw it was um, down on uh, Route 20 in Westfield um, because that's where it all ended up, right? Yeah. Uh, from yeah. North Pond. Yeah, and. Um, and of course, South Long Yard Road, where he went through the Keenan property yep. there. Yep. Mm, I have a whole scrap scrapbook of pictures that were taken at that time. That, that must be very interesting to yeah. look back at those <laughs> it pictures because it sure, sure yeah. tore up the town of Southwick it, uh, it, in pretty it? good shape. I never saw much of the of the lakes, the damage that was done there, but it was good. So. 
Just to, to complete the loop, uh, what happened to the Brookside rest area? Did it just, uh, uh, did the flood take, you know, did, was that the end of it? Or, uh, because I remember it as a very small child, but, you know, it, it just stopped at some point. No, it, it came back because then um, the owners of it now, I think, bought it back. <coughs> My parents built a house there in maybe, what, 63, 64. And I think that the people next door bought it some maybe late 50s, early okay. 60s. That'd be Machios, right? Yeah. Machios, wow. Yeah. 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 So, but um, it was it was beautiful land. It, it was it was all meadow and. I can remember even as an adult, uh, I'd meet people from you know Springfield or you know uh, uh, out of town, and they would all have good memories about coming for you know like company picnics, family picnics, yeah, exactly. and so forth to. To exactly. Brookside uh, Picnic Road, yeah, uh, and um, and they would go in the brook and splash around. The kids had a great time. <laughs> so, what was your favorite beach to go to on Congamon while you were growing up? Kings Beach. Kings Beach. My dad always took us to Kings Beach, and then my um, my aunts, who weren't that much older than me, would take me to Babs Beach. Cause that must have been where the boys were, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you want to you want to go to the right beach? <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> um, they were they were already older than me, and they were teenagers and taking us, you know. And um, so, uh, but Dad always took us to Kings Beach. That was that was the place to go. So, what do you remember about Kings Beach in those days? Because it was, you know, I mean, now we all it's it's like a ghost town. Yeah. Uh, really, but nah, it was really quite a quite a property. It was. It, it was. It was very safe for us. Um, father taught us. Tried to. Well, he tried to teach me how to swim. I never. I was always afraid of the water, but I loved it. And um, but um, my brothers and I, we we just had a great time down there. There was a raft, and they would learn to swim to the raft. And, it was good. It was quiet. It wasn't like Bad Beach with all the people there and the rafts out there and the boats going by. And <laughs> How much do you suppose it cost to get into uh, Kings Beach back at, in those days? Like five or ten cents? Yeah, it couldn't have been very much. Yeah. yeah. I didn't think so. One of the other places <laughs> that Dad used to take us was the gorge. Oh. We used to go up the gorge and. And that was cold water, right? Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah <laughs> that it was. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. By August, that you know, some uh, you know, especially a hot summer, that that was very refreshing up there. Yeah, yep, yeah. yeah. um, But Kings Beach was was the favorite. The people there were always so nice. The ones who owned it, I met them, you know, years later, in. Um, because I think one of them uh, gave a talk at the Historical Society or something. And um, they, they're just wonderful people. So what other things did you do for fun growing up in Southwick? You worked hard. Uh, we worked you, hard. It sounds like you were a very diligent student at the Consolidated. Yes. Uh, so other fun memories that you have from growing up at that time? Well, we, of course, we had 4-H, we had Girl Scouts, we had, there was a, there was a lot. We were always busy. Um, we didn't have the sports. I don't remember doing much with sports, you know, like, yeah, like you have the rec center and things like that. Um, with us, it was, you know, that was a time that, time of the year that my parents were so busy with the tobacco uh, in the summer, so you didn't really, after the end of the day, Father would take us to King's Beach or something like that, you know. But, um, oh, and one of the other things that we really loved doing was that Dad would take, and, um, take us with him and he'd check all his barns and tobacco fields and everything else on a regular basis, bring us by the golf course and let us 
take a look at golf balls. <laughs> <laughs> and we would always find golf balls. We thought that that was the greatest thing going. And to, um, along the edges. Sure. And, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. And of course, the, the uh, Corona Farm was there, George Hughes and, and his wife and family. And um, we would go there and see the cows. See the cows sure. and play in the hay. And <laughs> <laughs> so going to the restaurant there, you know, you're sitting up in, upstairs having dinner, and that's where you used to play in the hay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. yeah it was but, nice. but down in the bar area, that's where the cows were. Yeah. That's like what I always thought when I went there. It's like, you know, oh, this didn't, you know, uh, at least in the hay mow, that was relatively clean up there, yeah. but not so much where, oh boy. where the cow stable was. But I remember the day that the, the, the um, bull came in. They bought a, a prize bull, and my dad had built um, a huge pen for it, real stable. And boy, that bull was angry when he got in there. <laughs> <laughs> I always remember that. It just, it just sticks out, you know. My dad told me uh, when I was growing up, he was friends with the Hugheses. Uh, but that that was a show farm yes, uh, it was. for Hathaway and Steen. I mean, yes, you know, they, they had really had no business being in the dairy cow business, but uh, they loved to be able to kind of show it off to the people from wherever the headquarters was. Yep. And, exactly. Uh, and that they, uh, he always kind of envied George Hughes a little bit because he got to farm, you know, with other people's money. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, and, that's true. Uh, that's true. And that, and that happened quite often. It was the same way with Phil Hall's farm before Phil bought it, I believe, that yep. that was the, with the Crane family. That's correct, yeah. That had that as a show place. And, and um, but they all turned out good. You got a beautiful golf course up there. You got a beautiful restaurant or brewery, whatever. So. Yeah. What other memories about living in this wonderful town for a lifetime do you, do you, should we talk about today? <sighs> memories. I've always loved it. I mean, I love the people. It shows. I love the people. Um, you know, I used to know everyone. I worked for, I was the first, first secretary for the police department. Oh, wow. And so I took in, um, I got to know a lot of people. I also did one of the um, census, census back in the 70s. I think I did, it was in the 70s sometime. So I had to visit all over town and, you know. And um, so I met a lot of people that I actually um, saw later on as they got older and you know, I was working the polls or something, and oh, so my, oh, and I worked at the library. Oh, very good with Mrs. Blake. I, no, yeah, with Mrs. Blake, Mrs. Nelson first. The new I went, library. And then on the one on College Highway. The real library. <laughs> the real library. <laughs> yeah, I was I was oh, twelve I years old. <laughs> I was twelve years old, and I was um, working on a Girl Scout badge. So Mrs. Nelson allowed me to come in and help wow. her. So then when I turned 16, Mrs. Blake was also helping Mrs. Nelson and Mrs. Blake took over. And then when I was 16, I was started getting paid. So, and I worked right up until I graduated from high school. Wow. Yeah, and I'm, so I knew a lot of people there. So a lot of people will think this is a trivia question, but you'll remember, who was Southwick's first full-time police chief? It was Mr. Curran, wasn't yes. it? Yep. Yes, yep. So tell us a little bit about uh, Mr. Curran as, as chief of police, and oh. then I'll ask you about his successor, who served a little yeah. bit longer. But <laughs> uh, what do you remember about Southwick's first police chief? great guy. He was a great guy. He was um, very caring, he was passionate about his job. He, he always wanted to do the right thing. Um, and, um, you know, he, he was a good person. 
Am I correct that in the beginning it was just he and a sergeant, right? Were yeah. the only full-time yeah. police. Everybody else was a volunteer. Right. Uh, and so it was really, yeah. a, um, uh, and I, I don't mean anything bad by this, but kind of like uh, um, uh, Andy of Mayberry type yeah. thing. You know, <laughs> just, just two police yeah. officers. Yeah, I love so, that program. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so we're okay. Uh, so. So uh, what? So the, I believe the second chief was Charlie Wolf. So yeah, what do you remember really. about Charlie? Char Charlie, I was already gone when Charlie oh, okay. left. I left before Jim um, was gone too, and um, but Charlie was my milk man. Yeah. He delivered the milk, you know, and um, so that's how I remember him. And oh, and he had. He had a store in Southwood, too, where he sold sports equipment. Is that right? Yeah, it was, um, I believe it was um, where Subway is now. Okay. And um, he had a sports equipment there. I remember my mother going in there for Christmas and bought my brother's boxing gloves. <laughs> I guess she figured if they were going to hit each other, they would, would be right. soft. Do it by the rules, huh? <laughs> Yeah, so, um, yeah, but um, I, Charlie was always a good person. They, I would hear them, uh, they took and rode their snowmobiles in the winter by our property and, and through the Machios there. And, um, but he was always a great guy, yeah. too. We, yeah. yeah, we had wonderful people in South East. The, I'll tell a quick story uh, that I think you'll appreciate. Charlie was our milkman too, and he'd get uh, and he also bought a case of eggs once a week from us because he <laughs> sold the eggs. But um, he would come running into the house like almost like he was out of breath, and he'd say, "Oh, I'm way behind. Uh, uh, I, I can't stay." And it was you know all he had to do was drop off a couple bottles of milk, uh, <laughs> and then. He, and it was lunchtime for us, so we're all sitting there. And then he would proceed to talk for half an hour. Uh, <laughs> and he knew, he, and it was highly entertaining. He knew everything that yes, was going on in town. Sure. And he'd pick up something new, like, you know, like, you know, <laughs> uh, uh, you know, one of us had had, you know, an accident or something right. like that, you know. But, uh, but, you know, and then, and then, you know, after, you know, it seemed like half an hour some days, he'd say, oh, I, I can't talk today. I got to, you know, and, <laughs> and he must have gotten home at like eight o'clock at night because he, he just loved people. He uh, did. He loved to visit. He was a natural storyteller. Yeah, uh, he definitely was because uh, I remember all of that. And uh, he, he was, he, he just, everyone loved him. And, w and waited for him to come because sure. <laughs> it was better than miss it. It right. was yeah. better than the local newspaper. It was maybe like the Joe Didi show of the day. Oh. Uh, uh. Yeah, except yeah. it came to you, right? Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah it, it did. It literally, showed up right. at your, your brought your milk lunch and lunch table. Right. Yeah. yeah. So you went from a milkman to the police. Yes. 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 Wow. Yeah. There was always a little bit of controversy there, you know that. We're not going to get into that. No, uh, yeah. that's. Water over the dam. Yes, yeah, it is. Uh, and, it, and, you know, it all worked out, and yep, it was it beautiful. Yeah. Yep. yep. But uh, you described it very well. Good people who loved the town yeah. and got us started down the road to the great police force that we have we do. Uh, today. Uh, these guys are wonderful. They really, really are. They're such gentlemen. And they and they care about their jobs, and they love. They do. And that's the, that's the key. They care. Yeah. They care. They care about people. Uh, yeah. When I, you know, when I hear some criticism sometime, it just, I just, I just let them have it. <laughs> 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 you should be, you're very lucky yeah. you know, to have who we have in our town and, and all the police chiefs that we've had and everything else has been wonderful. What else should we ask this lovely lady, Joe? I, there's a million questions, right? So you love the town. Yes. What's the biggest change you've seen? I guess the biggest change, you know, it's funny. You can go through this town and you don't really see changes, you know, on the roads, on the main roads. But if you go on the back roads and go into, um, I remember going down Foster Road and I, I had my mom with me. And I says, they built houses down here. I says, I, I have never been down here. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. All 
the houses that were there. And this is where I get surprises, you know, when you get off like Reservoir Road, off of the yeah. uh, and you Mining Road, all right. those subdivisions down right. there. Um, and that that's where the changes are. In, uh, but when you go, you know, like on the College Highway, now you're getting a few businesses where tobacco always was or right. there. But um, but it's nice. It's it's um, it hasn't changed. It, and I'm I'm very grateful to Don Desmond and the Planning Board and what they did. Way back the when. The vision. Yep. Yep. Many years ago, to plan it the way they did because it really has worked and um, you can look at other towns uh, like uh, just like in Agawam I mean you, you I still can't understand Agawam I there's know. a house and then there's a business behind right. it exactly. and only so many feet that Ex I never understood that exactly yeah. and but these gentlemen had vision and they um, they did a great job Mr. Prifty was another gentleman that did so much for our town yep. and cared a lot about it. I remember doing the bicentennial ball with him and being on the committee and we had a good time. Bicentennial ball. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I was over at the, where Comark, well, the one feet thing down there from Comark. But um, yeah. been a lot of good things. All right. Well, we appreciate you coming in. Well, thank you. That was great. You know, a little history never hurts us, especially the younger folks. You know. <laughs> Did you grow up in town? I moved here. I was thinking about that the other day. I think in 74, we bought a farm at an auction up on, and I always screw it up, Klein Road, take a left. Is that north or south? Loomis. If you're at the end of Klein Road and you go left. That'd be south Loomis. South Loomis. Yeah. So Shaughnessy. Oh, right. Well, Shaughnessy property yes. yeah. up there. Yeah. So we yeah. bought a 12 or 14 acre ranch with a barn. Yeah. We came, my mother remarried, so we came from Westfield. Mm -hmm. It's called the Lazy Seven Ranch, is what they called. There were seven kids. Um, <laughs> you bought chickens, and then you found out what weasels were after the third time you bought chickens <laughs> because they were dead the next morning three times in a row. The wow. weasels appreciated it, they, though. They did, they, they did. They ate well that summer. Yeah, you learned how to shoot a gun, and then you were spitting pellets out of the squash all winter because <laughs> you were shooting into the squash. We didn't know anything. <laughs> you bought two, we bought two mules at auction. Two days later, we had three. We didn't realize one was pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> you know? That's all part of the process. No, it, and, it, and it, it is, yep. Mm -hmm. You had tomato, we came home, you, you did the tomato plants, you weeded, you... You know, we oh. had cattle, you couldn't name them. Because then this old guy would show up in the fall with a truck and stay for the weekend. And then next thing you know, you had seven cows hanging <laughs> in the barn. <laughs> you know? That, that's that's my version like of growing up on a farm. You sounds know, like the Klein Road version of Green Acres. Yeah. You yeah. Know, and it worked, right? It worked. You, you did what you... My biggest, which I love, is my f stepfather at the time must not have liked the town assessor here. Because he had this thing, then at the house we bought on auction wasn't finished. But apparently back then, if you didn't hang the closet doors, the house wasn't finished. Oh. I, I, I just, <laughs> and he was an accountant, <laughs> an accountant by trade, so, he you know, he, he was good with his numbers. He knew how to get, play the game. Oh, my God, yes, I can always remember. We never had closet doors. Well, if we hang those doors, the house is finished, and they're yeah. going to tax us differently. Oh, that's all I remember that's as right, a kid. yeah. You know, just the weirdest things. Yeah. yeah. Well, my my mother um, was born and brought up right at the side of Mountain Road there. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so that's the, way south Loomis. Yes, yeah. yes. And um, their house was right at the base of the mountain there. And um, mother, you know, later on in years, I remember going to White Lake. There, the White Lake Pond, whatever yep. it is, and swimming and. Yep, we had a pond across from us, and my claim to fame, Mr. Cantell, so Cantell Supermarket. Oh, okay. Right. They lived right up on um, what was across from us. It wasn't Bugby. Um, I can't think of the name, but right across from our bus stop, there was a road that went up there in the back. Exactly. And Mr. Cantell lived there. And there's yep. a little pond there on the left. Yeah. Yep. yep. That was yeah. it. That's all I got. You know, that's in the late '70s, early '80s. So. 
Yeah, yeah nothing that, compared to you kids. Yeah, that in that in that area grew up a little bit too. It has pretty houses it really has. there. Yep. Yeah, there was farm fields at the end of Klein. Now they're houses. You're yeah. right. And in our case, the bus stop, we'd have to wait because if Mr. Prifty, the farmer at the end of Klein Pando. Road. Pando. What was it? Pando. 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 If those cows got out, <laughs> you waited. You weren't. The yeah. cows came first crossing that. They, they had two different sides of the road there on Klein. Yeah. yeah. Now I'm going to tell another quick story here as long as you brought Prifty's up because yeah. we've talked about both Pando and Nutri now. They were brothers. Okay. Uh, they didn't always see eye to eye as I no. understand it. No. And one time... Uh, they were going to do some, the town was going to do some road work uh, on Klein Road. Uh, and the story, uh, and for whatever reason, Pando did not think the road work needed to happen. <laughs> so when the highway crew got there, he'd let his cows out uh, <laughs> on Klein Road and, and told the highway crew, you're not coming through. You know, much <laughs> figure out how to move these cows. Uh, I believe that. that it, yeah. uh, I am told that's a true story. Yeah. yeah, and he was a nice guy. We would see him out there all the time. Uh, you know, as kids, he, he was a really nice guy. I went, their daughter was in, in my class. She lives out in California now, but uh, she was in my class. Yeah. Janice? No, Leanne. Oh, Leanne, okay. Because yeah. Janice is, is back in, uh, I don't know if she lives in town, but she's nearby. Her brother oh. is the one that built the new home, though, yeah. right? Yeah. 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 Oh, on the property there, that new house? Yeah, yep, yeah yep. that's a lovely home. Yeah. So pretty for it that. It fits that area. It does. Yes, yeah, it does. Yes. So, Joyce, I think the, the appropriate way to uh, close this out is to get on your calendar for uh, when you turn 100. Yeah. And after they've had the big party for you out here in the senior center, <laughs> uh, back here to talk to Joe and me. Is, oh, is, is it I a think date? that's wonderful. It's a date. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. I'm ready. Okay, we'll okay. be ready too. <laughs> uh, uh, well, Mrs. Mrs. Um, uh, Lemieux just made it. Mabel made it too, and she was one of my mother's friends. She just made it, and um, about 102. Yeah, there you mm -hmm. go. We have a gentleman at our church that just turned 101. Uh, nice. And uh, yeah. uh, we we all say, you know, we hope we're we're yeah. as as. Yeah. Mentally sharp yeah. uh, when when we're at that age, uh, you know, hearing's not great, but uh, uh, but he he's a you know wonderful gentleman. Wonderful. Yeah, uh, so it's uh. nice. You just you just want to see what evolves. You yeah. know, right. you want to see what your grandchildren do and see what the next chapter of the story is. Correct. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, just stay busy. That's yeah. my thing. Stay busy. <laughs> All right, folks. Thank you for uh, watching this, and uh, we'll see you soon.